Hi, I'm Tristan Posey. I'm the Amorex Fire Test Supervisor, and this is the Stored Pressure Wheeled Unit Extinguisher Training. Inspecting the Extinguisher. This extinguisher must be inspected at regular intervals, monthly or more often if circumstances dictate, to ensure that it's ready for use. The inspection is a quick check to make sure that the fire extinguisher is available and in operating condition. It's intended to give reasonable assurance that the extinguisher is fully charged. This is done by verifying that it's in its designated place, that it has not been actuated or tampered with, and that there is no obvious physical damage or condition to prevent its operation. Periodic Inspection Procedures NFPA 10 Periodic Inspection of Fire Extinguishers shall include a check of at least the following items. It should be located in its designated place. There should be no obstruction to access or visibility. The pressure gauge reading or indicator is in the operable range or position. The operating instructions are on the nameplate and facing outward. The tamper seal is not broken or missing. Examination for obvious physical damage, corrosion, leakage, or clogged nozzle. The wheels should rotate freely. Maintenance, service procedure. NFPA 10 says that at least once a year or more frequently if circumstances require, maintenance shall be performed. Maintenance is a thorough check of the extinguisher. It's intended to give maximum assurance that a fire extinguisher will operate effectively and safely. It includes a thorough examination for physical damage or a condition that would prevent its operation and any necessary repair or replacement. It will normally reveal if hydrostatic testing or internal maintenance is required. Note, this procedure will be best accomplished with the extinguisher in an upright position and on a level surface. Clean the extinguisher to remove dirt, grease, or foreign material. Check to make sure the instruction pictogram is securely fastened and legible. Inspect the cylinder for corrosion, abrasion, dents, or well damage. If any damage is found, hydrostatically test to factory test pressure of 500 PSI using the proof pressure method in accordance with instructions in CGA C1 and C6 and NFPA 10. See proper method of depressurizing and reclaiming chemical in recharge procedures. Caution. When cleaning, avoid the use of any solvents around the pressure gauge. They could seriously damage the plastic gauge face. Inspect the extinguisher for damaged, missing, or substitute parts. Only factory replacement parts are approved for use on Amorex fire extinguishers. Weigh the extinguisher and compare the weight to the weight block section on the nameplate. Recharge the extinguisher if the weight is not within the indicated allowable tolerances. Check the date of manufacture printed on the extinguisher label or on the agent cylinder dome. The agent cylinder must be hydrostatically tested in accordance with DOT requirements to the test pressure indicated on the nameplate of 500 PSI. Visually inspect the pressure gauge. If it's bent, damaged, or the wrong gauge, depressurize the cylinder and replace it. If the pressure is low, check for leaks. Remove pull pin checking for freedom of movement. Replace if bent or if removal appears difficult. Visually inspect without removing the agent fill cap for damage or distortion. Replace as necessary only after proper depressurization procedures have been performed. Warning, always open the shutoff nozzle handle slowly. Any evidence of agent in the nozzle indicates that the unit may have been used and the use not reported. Be prepared for a possible discharge and nozzle recoil. Check the nozzle shutoff lever for freedom of movement. Open and close it several times. If the operation is impeded, disassemble the nozzle, replace the parts, and properly lubricate as necessary. Make sure that the nozzle tip is clear and unobstructed. After making sure that there is no residual pressure in the discharge hose, disconnect it from the operating valve. Blow air through the hose and nozzle assemblies to ensure that the passage is clear of foreign material. Check the couplings, hose, and hose gasket for damage or deterioration. Replace as necessary. Inspect the valve assembly for corrosion or damage to hose thread connection. Replace valve assembly or component parts as necessary following the proper depressurization and recharge procedures. If valve removal is necessary, complete all steps in the complete maintenance procedure. Hello, I am Carol Buckner with Amorex Corporation. 
Today, I will be showing you the technique to rolling or flooring our hoses on our wheel unit products. The first step is to check the inside of the hose for the gasket to make sure there are no cuts or any damage to it. After your inspection of the gasket, then your next step would be to hand tighten your hose to your discharge valve. Lean the unit back on its wheels to make it easier to roll or core the hose on the unit. To begin to roll the hose, move your hose to the left side of the top support, then roll between the left and right side supports back to the top. For your reverse loop, you would take your right hand, bring your hose toward the unit to form a loop to pass to your left hand and place on the unit. Continue to alternate a regular and reverse loop until all of the holes is cored. This technique allows the hose to unravel without kinking. Then secure your nozzle into the nozzle holder. To finish securing the hose to the discharge valve, hold the coupling in place and tighten the swivel till firm. This coiling process applies to most wheel units regardless of agent field. Note, when assembling the hose to the agent cylinder or nozzle to the hose, tighten the coupling a quarter turn after contacting the hose gasket. Inspect the wheels to ensure they rotate freely. Lubricate as necessary. Check carriage assembly for loose nuts, bolts, frame distortion, or damage. Check welds for damage or corrosion replace any damaged parts, or make repairs as necessary. Install new tamper seal and record service data on the extinguisher inspection tag. If the extinguisher has been moved to perform service, make sure that it's returned to its proper location. Complete maintenance, six year teardown. NFPA 10 requires that every six years, stored pressure extinguishers shall be emptied and subjected to the applicable maintenance procedures. When the applicable maintenance procedures are performed during periodic recharging or hydrostatic testing, the six-year requirement shall begin from that date. NFPA 10 requires a verification of service external collar tag to be installed on the extinguisher whenever a six-year maintenance is performed. The verification of service tag can only be installed if the operating valve has been removed. Discharge chemical and pressure into a closed dry chemical recovery system. Several are commercially available. Make sure that the extinguisher is completely empty and depressurized. Note, these extinguishers operate at 240 PSI. Some recovery systems may require that the pressure be reduced to safely discharge the chemical and pressure into the system. Use the pressure bleeder valve on the extinguisher valve to reduce the pressure to a point registering just below the green operable area on the pressure gauge. Discharge the extinguisher into a recovery system. Repressurize the extinguisher to no more than 200 PSI to exhaust any chemical remaining in the extinguisher. Note, a closed recovery system is designed to prevent loss of the chemical fines. Loss of the fines could result in reduced extinguisher efficiency. Clean the extinguisher to remove dirt, grease, or foreign material. Check to make sure that the instruction nameplate is securely fastened and legible. Inspect the cylinder for corrosion, abrasion, dents, or weld damage. If any of these conditions are found and you doubt the integrity of the cylinder, hydrostatically test to factory test pressure marked on the nameplate in accordance with CGA C1 and NFPA 10 and DOT regulations. Note, when cleaning, avoid the use of solvents around the pressure gauge. They could seriously damage the plastic gauge face. Inspect the extinguisher for damaged, missing, or substitute parts. Only factory replacement parts are approved for use on Amarex fire extinguishers. Check the date of manufacture on the extinguisher dome. The cylinder must be hydrostatically tested 12 years after the original date of manufacture and every seven years thereafter to the test pressure indicated on the nameplate of 500 PSI. The cylinder may be hydrostatically tested every 12 years using the water jacket method. Visually inspect the pressure gauge. If it's bent, damaged, or the wrong gauge, replace it with the proper Amerix gauge. Check the pull pin for freedom of movement. 
Replace if bent or removal appears difficult. Verify that no pressure remains in the extinguisher by opening the valve and nozzle shut off and making sure there is no discharge. Remove and inspect the agent fill cap for damage or distortion. Check the nozzle shut off lever for freedom of movement. Open and close it several times. If the operation is impeded, disassemble the nozzle, replace the parts, and properly lubricate as necessary. Make sure the nozzle tip is clear and unobstructed. Disconnect the discharge hose from the operating valve. Blow air through the hose and nozzle assemblies to ensure that the passage is clear form material. Check the couplings, hose, and hose gasket for damage or deterioration. Replace as necessary. The discharge hose shall be hydrostatically tested to 300 PSI every 12 years. Inspect the wheels to ensure they rotate freely. Lubricate as required. Check the carriage assembly for loose nuts, bolts, frame distortion, or damage. Check the welds for damage or corrosion. Replace damaged parts or make repairs as necessary. Warning, valve removal and or valve part replacement shall be made only after completing the depressurization procedures listed in step one of the complete maintenance section. Remove operating valve assembly. Inspect for corrosion or damage to hose thread connection. Complete steps two through 14 of recharge procedure. Wheeled unit extinguisher recharging procedure. Warning, before attempting to disassemble, be sure the extinguisher is completely depressurized. Never have any part of your body over the extinguisher while removing the valve assembly. Use a protective shield between you and the pressure gauge while charging an extinguisher. Do not stand in front of the gauge if a shield is not available. Use a regulated pressurizing source of dry nitrogen only with a minimum dew point of minus 70 F or negative 57 C. Set the regulator to no more than 265 PSI or 1,827 kPa. Check and calibrate regulator gauge at frequent intervals. The regulator gauge shall be used to determine when the intended charging pressure has been reached. Do not use the extinguisher gauge for this purpose. Never leave an extinguisher connected to a regulator of high pressure source for an extended period of time. A defective regulator could cause the cylinder to rupture due to excessive pressure. Do not mix types of dry chemicals in extinguishers, recharge, or recovery systems. Mixing ABC with regular Purple K, Super K, or Monex dry chemicals may result in a chemical reaction capable of developing a dangerous pressure buildup. Perform steps one through 12 of the complete maintenance six year teardown section. Thoroughly clean all parts of the disassembled valve with a soft bristle brush or soft cloth. Blow the valve out with air or nitrogen. Inspect spring and down tube assembly and replace parts if worn or damaged. Install a new valve stem and collar o-ring after lightly lubricating with an Amrex approved lubricant. Reassemble the valve assembly, including the down tube, and set aside. Remove any chemical remaining in the cylinder and check the condition. Properly dispose of any chemical that is contaminated or caked. 
Inspect the cylinder interior following CGA Visual Inspection Standard C6. Using an accurate scale, fill cylinder with the correct amount and type of dry chemical specified on the label. Use Amerix chemical which has been kept free of moisture and contamination. Do not mix types of chemicals. Clean cylinder or collar o-ring seat and collar threads with a small brush and wipe off surfaces with a clean cloth to remove dust. Lightly brush the collar o-ring seat with an Amerix approved lubricant. Install verification of service external collar tag. Install discharge valve assembly and attach pressurizing adapter to the discharge port. With the extinguisher properly secured in an upright position, connect the nitrogen pressurizing line with a quick connect to the nitrogen charging adapter. Rotate the extinguisher operating valve lever to the open position and pressurize the extinguisher with dry nitrogen to 240 PSI. When the desired pressure has been reached, rotate the operating lever to the closed position, shut off the nitrogen supply, and remove the quick connect. Caution, pressurizing the extinguisher in this manner will allow for proper aeration of the chemical through the down tube. Do not use the bleeder valve to pressurize the extinguisher. Check the extinguisher for leaks by applying leak detect fluid or a solution of soapy water to the nitrogen charging adapter orifice around the collar o-ring sealing area, the cylinder welds, and the gauge. Reconnect the hose to the operating valve. Properly coil the hose on the rack and install the nozzle with the lever in a closed position on the mount. Note, when assembling the hose to the agent cylinder or nozzle to the hose, tighten the coupling a quarter turn after contacting the hose gasket. Install the pull pin and tamper seal. Record the recharge date and attach a new recharge tag. Weigh the assembled extinguisher and confirm that the total weight is within the allowable tolerances indicated in the maintenance section of the nameplate. Return the extinguisher to its proper location. Mountings for stationary extinguishers shall be properly secured. Thank you for watching our training video on Amerex Stored Pressure Wheeled Extinguishers. For more information, please refer to amerex-fire.com where quality is behind the diamond.